because I am a former official of the CIA, I have a commitment, a legally binding commitment based on a secrecy agreement that I signed when I went to work for the agency, that before I publish something like this Century Foundation paper, I show it to the CIA and they review it to make sure that I am not revealing classified information. The CIA cleared on this Century Foundation paper without proposing to change a word of the draft. So you can read the argument that I just made in this Century Foundation paper. But unfortunately, you won't read it in an op-ed that I prepared with my wife, Hillary Mann Leverett, uh, an op-ed that we prepared for publication in the New York Times last week that is based on this Century Foundation paper, which the CIA said did not contain any classified information. The reason why you won't read it in the New York Times is because I had to tell the New York Times not to publish it because the White House intervened in the CIA's pre-publication review process and has threatened me with criminal prosecution if I publish this op-ed based on the Century Foundation paper because in the White House's view that op-ed contains classified information. That claim is false. Indeed, I would say that claim is fraudulent. The people making that claim know it is not true. The White House is using the rubric of protecting classified information not to protect classified information, but to limit the dissemination of the views of someone who is very critical of their approach to Iran policy. The White House intervened in the clearance process to excise whole paragraphs from the draft op-ed paragraphs that deal with things like the fact that after the 9-11 attacks we had a dialogue with Iran over Afghanistan. This was, it was cleared for me to write about this in the Century Foundation paper. I have mentioned U.S. Iranian cooperation over Afghanistan in two op-eds I've published previously in the New York Times, both of which were cleared. The fact that we had a dialogue with Afghanistan has been talked about in public by Secretary Rice, by Secretary Powell when he was in office, by Deputy Secretary of State Armitage when he was in office. It has been extensively reported in the media. There is no way that our having a dialogue with Iran over Afghanistan can be considered classified information that is not already in the public domain. But I am being threatened with criminal prosecution if I publish this in a New York Times op-ed right now at a time when the White House is under maximum political pressure over its mishandling of American policy in the Middle East. Similarly, the White House intervened in the clearance process to, exercise, to excise whole paragraphs from the draft op-ed that deal with the fact that in the spring of 2003, the Iranians offered to negotiate a comprehensive grand bargain of the sort that I just described. They offered to negotiate that with the United States. And this administration rejected that offer. Now, this too has been talked about by Secretary Rice in public, 
It has been extensively reported in the media. Enterprising journalists have managed to obtain copies of the document that the Iranians sent in to us proposing these negotiations. But for me to write about this and the way that the administration blew this opportunity in 2003, for me to write about that now at this critical moment on the op-ed pages of the New York Times, for that the White House threatens me with criminal prosecution for disclosing classified information. Again, the claim is not just false, it is fraudulent. It is fraudulent. I also have to say it is very disappointing to me that former colleagues at the CIA have proven so spineless in the face of this kind of tawdry political pressure from the White House. Officials of the CIA's uh, publication review board told me that in their view, on their own, my draft op-ed the draft op-ed that I wanted to publish as a co-authored piece with my wife did not contain classified information, but they had to bow to the wishes of the White House. Intelligence officers are supposed to behave better than that. And it is sad to me that this is yet one more instance where people in the intelligence community who know better are not prepared to speak truth to power, which is the whole point of having a separate intelligence agency like the CIA. But that is the state of the intelligence community in our country six years into the Bush administration. Please subscribe to Representative Press and look over the links to the right. The Bush administration has committed fraud in the past. Here's the evidence.